comes Paul. Okay, so um, our portion today, uh, this week, is a double portion. It's, it's often doubled and uh, always read on the Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah. And that is the, uh, the portions Nitzavim Vayelech. So the portion begins on page 1165 in the Yitzchayim, but I want to look uh, at a couple of things from Vayelech. So let's turn to page um, 1176. Baruch HaTad Anai Elohim Melech Olam Shekitshanu B'mitzvotav Etzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. So um, what were, what is reiterated, what is reiterated in both portions is what is talked about um, mainly throughout the book of, of uh, Devarim, and that is um, Moses encouraging the people, reminding the people, doing everything he can other than physically forcing the people to follow the covenant. And uh, throughout the book of Deuteronomy, we've seen different ways in which Moses has brought that message home, um, that uh, following God's ways, you'll be rewarded neglect God's ways, you'll be punished. So we have that again in this portion, but um, there's a little, um, there's something extra about what will happen when you don't follow in God's ways uh, that goes a little bit beyond the punishment. And that's, that's the first thing I wanna look at here on page 1176. So, um, uh, beginning with verse 16. Vayomer Adonai el Moshe, God said to Moses, Hincha shochev im avotecha, uh, literally it means you're about to lie with your ancestors, meaning you're about to die. Vikam ha'am hazeh, and this people will arise. Vizana achare elohe nechar ha'aretz, Asherhu va shama bekirbo. So the the after you die, so you're about to die, and the people will this people will rise up, and go a whoring after the god the the foreign gods of the land. That the people are about to go into. Uh, so, in other words, the land that the people are about to go into, the foreign gods of that land, they're going to follow after you die. And va'azavani, um, and they'll forsake me, ve'hefer et briti, and they'll break my covenant, asher karati ito, that I have enacted or made uh, with it, the people. So you're about to die, the people are gonna go into the land of Israel and they're going to immediately um, follow after the other gods there. Okay, now if we read the book of Joshua and Judges, we see that almost uh, th that uh, the way the books describe it, that's almost exactly what happened. Vechara um, api vo. Just one second. One more person's coming in, and I'll tell us all where we are. Um, well, it's taken a little while for the other one. Okay, there it is. Um, so we're on page eleven seventy six in the Eitz Chaim. We're now up to verse seventeen. The chara apivo, I will get really, I will get angry at the people. By yom hahu on that day, on that day when they leave me, forsake me, 
va'azavtim, and I will forsake them. Vehi starti panai mehem, vehaya le'echol, I will hide my face from them, um, um, and they will be they will be for food. It says here they'll be ready prey. That the, in other words, um, they're going to forsake me. I'm going to forsake them, and then that makes them uh, the people um, um, vulnerable to attack. Umitsauhu raot rabot. So lots of evil things will find them. Vit sarot and trouble. The Amar Bayom Hahu, and they will say on that day, Hallo Al Ki Ain Elohai Bikir B. Is it not that God is not among us? Mitsauni Haraota Ela that uh, these evil things have found us. Uh, 18, Va'anochi haster astir panai bayom hahu al kol hara'a asher asa. And I, I will surely hide my face on that day for because of all the evil that they've done, the people of Israel have done, Kifana uh, el Elohim acherim, because they have turned to other gods with a small g. So, verse 19, Va'ata, and so, therefore, and now, Kidvulachem et Hashira Hazot. Write for yourselves this poem or this song, Velamda et Bene Yisrael Sima Vefihem and teach it to the people of Israel so that it will be, um, uh, so that, um, so that, uh, uh, put it in their mouths, right? But it's more than put it in their mouths. Like, teach it so that they know it by heart. It's kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance or, or, or the National Anthem. You know, we all know it by heart because we've sung it so many times. That's the same thing. Same idea with this poem that uh, Moses is supposed to teach the people. It's supposed to be like regular in their mouth. When when anybody were to ask, what's that poem that Moses taught? They can quote it um, in its entirety. Uh, why? Lama'an tihi ali hashira hazot le'ed bivnei Yisrael. So that the song, the poem, will be a witness uh, for me among the... Yeah people of Israel. Okay, everybody's muted, Sumner, so we're going to keep everybody muted, uh, unless you have a question or a comment to make. So, um, God recognizes, God tells Moses that God's recognizing that the people are going to forsake God, and therefore God is going to forsake them, and (coughs) then all these bad things are going to happen to the people, and um, so, therefore, uh, the people are going to say, maybe it's because God has left us that all these bad things have happened. Okay, so we haven't exactly seen that part before, that God's going to forsake them. Uh, it's that we, we did see in that admonition, the long list of curses in last week's portion, that um, because the people have neglected God's ways, God's going to send all this list of punishments there. But I don't think God says that God's going to leave the people. It's just that this is the punishment for forsaking the covenant. So here's this extra step that God's going to forsake them to. So what I wanted to to spend a a, a moment or two on is this idea that um, uh, how we respond to events today. So what I mean by that is certainly for the Torah's perspective, and I would say the, the rest of the Bible's perspective as well, that it's, it's quite clear that things happen because God determines them to happen. So 
when looking at the world around us from a biblical point of view, that is, right, we're looking at the world around us through the lens of the Bible, that means that when we look out the window and here in Olney right now, it's raining because God is bringing the rain, right? And we look at nature. Nature is because God created the world and created this beautiful world around us, okay? We can even say we're all here today on Zoom live or you're watching the recording now whenever you're watching the recording, because somehow God led you to this, right? So the perspective for the Bible is God-oriented. We're, we're in this world today. We are born because God determined it. We live because God determines it. Uh, good things happen to us because God determines it. Bad things happen to us because God determines it. And that's us as individuals and us as the community of Israel. Okay, that's, that's a biblical perspective. So, of course, the, uh, the challenge is how do we understand this perspective when, uh, in light, for example, of October 7th? Right? So that is for, for, for those who have the biblical perspective of God in our lives, and this is a traditional Jewish view, it becomes challenging when such evil befalls us, right? So when it says, umitsa'uhu ra'ot rabot vitsarot, verse 17, so God's going to hide his face, and then evil things, many evils and troubles shall befall them. Well, we could argue October 7th, and how Hamas overran uh, all the communities and the Nova Music Festival outside of Gaza that day, that's bringing verse 17 to life. And so, of course, then it becomes theologically challenging in how to understand that, right? So uh, we, we, we can't help, I can't help but read these verses in light of what happened to Israel and by extension to all of us uh, on October 7th. And then it leaves us with a question. Did that happen because of exactly how God is telling it to Moses here? The people have forsaken God and therefore God's forsaking us and then evil runs rampant in the world until we find God again. Well, it might be a hard pill to swallow, uh, and I'd say even more than that, it might be uh, a tragedy, it is a tragedy, uh, but from the Torah's perspective, that's, that's uh, the, the, the black and white uh, way of understanding the way of the world. If bad things are happening to us, it's because we have forsaken God. But let me say it the other way. We have forsaken God, and therefore bad things have happened to us. So, which, which also leads further to the idea, did, have we really forsaken God? Right? So, for those of a, a traditional Jewish understanding, that is the more orthodox in the, in the community, you might have to argue that anybody not orthodox within the Jewish community is uh, practicing forsaking God. And that leads to divisions within the Jewish community. Uh, there are 14 million Jews in the world, let's say, and how many of them are believe in God. Well, then whose definition of believing in God? And then is it enough? Are there enough Jews who believe in God who will then offset those who don't and then allow good things to happen to us? And if there's a majority of the 14 million who do believe in God, then why are bad things happening to us? Okay, so uh, there's no answer because in every, in every year, every couple of years, our theology is challenged. 
So when, when things are rolling along nicely, and maybe there's a couple hiccups on the road, but essentially life is going well, then we, in, we can accept this traditional theology, this traditional understanding that God is controlling things, working behind the scenes on our behalf. But when there's more than a hiccup, but terrible things start happening, then it becomes problematic or challenging to accept this idea that God is causing these bad things to happen to us, right? So I know I've talked about this many times before, but I just want to say that the, that verse 17 brings the, its challenges to us as we read this in light of October 7th, okay? And that um, uh, it, it becomes challenging to accept the idea that God caused Hamas to overrun those communities and inflict such barbaric uh, destruction on Israel. And in light of the Torah, we have no choice but to understand that as a fulfillment of verse 17. But it leads to a more modern uh, uh, why there is a more modern approach to understanding God that allows us to still believe in God despite bad things happening to us, right? So that's where alternative viewpoints come in and alternative translations and interpretations would come in in order for us to accept uh, the words of the Torah. In other words, we don't have to rewrite the Torah in order for the Torah to fit our theology. We just have to reinterpret the Torah, which we're, we have every right to do. The rabbis reinterpreted the Torah, um, and therefore we have the right to reinterpret the Torah too. So um, without God in our lives, then we run the risk of our lives becoming chaotic. With God in our lives, we have a way to center ourselves in the midst of the chaos. That's how, that's how I understand it. So it's not, I don't understand God causing the chaos. I understand God as the refuge, the, 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 um, the, the, the life rope uh, that we hold on to in order to uh, survive uh, the, the chaos, the evil that goes on around us. Okay, so in that way, I can still uh, firmly believe in God while also affirming that God isn't, isn't the source of all this evil in the world. Okay, so that I just wanted to, to spend some time on verse 17 and to, and to understand, uh, understand this. Um, any, any thoughts or comments or questions about that? Okay, so let's, let's turn back um, to, um, to another section. Um, yeah, I just turn back one page to 1174. And um, here uh, is, we find a commandment about reading the Torah out loud to the community. So verse 10 on 1174, Vayetzav Moshe Otam Lemor, Moses uh, commanded them saying, that is the people of Israel, Miketz Sheva Shanim, Bimoed Shnat Hashmita Bechaga Sukkot. At the end of seven years, at the, the time of uh, the, the sabbatical year, during the holiday of Sukkot, okay, so the Hebrew here is a little bit uh, unclear. So it's saying here, every seventh year. Yeah, we, we, could, we, could, 
we could understand that, um, um, I guess, from context. It doesn't say exactly every seven years you should do this, because um, it would have said specifically, Miketz kol sheva shanim, at the end of every seven year cycle, uh, or bechol shnata shmita at every, every sabbatical year. So because it doesn't have that word there, that, but the, Engl the, the, the thrust of this is to be understood that this is to happen at every um, end of the sabbatical year during the holiday of Sukkot. So the sabbatical year, we learned back in Leviticus uh, that the land of Israel, the farmable land of Israel, is supposed to lie fallow every seventh year, raising the challenge of how, to, how people are going to survive with enough food during that time. But that's a, a discussion for another time. But uh, the seventh year is a year in which the land gets to rest. Because the land is holy, the, it gets to have a, de, a year of rest. The people of holy, we get a day of rest every week. So it's the same idea of Shabbat uh, for us. The land has a whole year to rest, rejuvenate, um, and for us to recognize um, nature's connection with God too. So at the end of that seventh year, the, the year begins every on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and so on the holiday of Sukkot, this is what's going to happen. 11, Bevo Kol Yisrael, Le raot et pene Adonai Elohecha, Bamakom Asher Yivchar, Tikra et Hatorah Hazot, Neged Kol Yisrael, the Oznehem. When the people of Israel come to see, or be, no, to, to, when the people of Israel come to be seen by the face of God your God, in the place that he chooses, right? For Deuteronomy, there's this concept of the temple in Jerusalem or some place like that. No other, no other book of the Torah has that. Uh, so when you come to be seen by God in the place that God chooses, right? Because you're it, Sukkot is a pilgrimage festival and you're going there anyway to bring the offerings and to uh, uh, observe the holiday. You should read this Torah in front of all of Israel in their ears, right? All of Israel should hear the Torah being read on the holiday of Sukkot at the end of the sabbatical year, every seventh year, okay? So that would be an extra celebration of the holiday of Sukkot in the sabbatical year in that they get to hear the entire Torah being read. Verse 12, Hakhel, that's what this mitzvah is called. Hakhel, gather the people, or <coughs> Kahal is congregation. So Hakhel is the verb, congregate. Uh, et Ha'am, the people, and which people? Ha'anashim, ve'hanashim, Vahataf vegercha asher bisharecha. So gather the people, that is, the men, the women, the children, and the resident aliens. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just get a sip of water. You'd think I'd learn my lesson to keep a glass of water with me, uh, right next to me. Um, so gather together the people, the men, the women, the children, and the resident aliens. Um, so the entire community of Israel that includes even non-Israelites who live among you. And we're told throughout the Torah that, or at least from Exodus through Deuteronomy, that um, the resident alien is part of your community. And we're allowed to keep the resident alien among us as long as the resident alien observes all of Israelite law. 
Right? They're supposed to keep Shabbat. They're supposed to keep kosher. And uh, they may not be able to bring the sacrifices to the temple in Jerusalem, but they are supposed to observe the holidays and supposed to follow the laws, business relations, things like that, like everybody else. So they also will hear the Torah because 36 times in the Torah we're told to be kind to the resident alien. So, um, so they get to hear the Torah being read too. Uh, so that they will hear and that they will learn and they will fear or be in awe of or um, God your God and they will be careful to observe or to follow all the words of this Torah so the, the public reading of the entire Torah, which according to the Torah happens once every seven years, but for us happens four times a week, Monday and Thursday mornings, Shabbat morning and Shabbat afternoon, four times of, of, of the services of the week. So of the 21 services that we have, um, every uh every week right three services a day seven days a week um four of them four of the 21 have a reading from the torah okay so just three short aliyot monday thursday saturday afternoon the full torah reading on shabbat morning and that's supposed to you know again it's the idea that the torah gives an ideal once every seven years you, you hear the entire torah but uh, in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, supposedly it was ordained that we actually read uh, from the Torah every week. Not the whole Torah, but just a portion every week so that we go through the entire Torah in the course of the year. So that was set up by Ezra and Nehemiah about uh, 2,500, 2,400 years ago, something like that. Um, so the, uh, um, here, the, the reason to read the Torah is so that we'd be motivated to follow the Torah. So once every seven years, enough to, um, to inspire the people to last them for seven years. So for, for us, we need uh, every couple of days to hear the Torah in order to, um, to be inspired. And you know, it's like what I, uh, when I teach the sixth and seventh graders, the idea of putting on talus and tefillin, you know, the rabbis understood that not all of us are saintly and righteous people. Uh, most people are not, and we're distracted in life, and we're tempted by so many things. And so uh, that's why we pray three times a day, so that we have these moments at least and in those at those three times to recognize what our true purpose in life is and to reorient ourselves spiritually morally and uh, ethically and so even while we're praying our minds could still wander and so we need to be wearing something to remind us so and even during the week uh, we wear to fill in so the, the idea of wearing a talus, we might forget that they we're wearing a talus. So even though wearing a talus is supposed to remind us of God's presence and the commandments, right? The, the blue stripe is supposed to remind us of God in heaven and the way the, the, the tzitzit are tied are supposed to remind us of the commandments. So we could forget that we're wearing a talit and also the tefillin, that's hard to forget that we're wearing them. If we wrap the straps tightly around our arm and it's on our head, we can't uh, help but, uh, f but realize that we're wearing that while we're praying so that at least for the half hour, 45 minutes of the morning service that we're praying in community or the 10 or 15 minutes that we pray by ourselves, that um, at, at, for those minutes, we're remembering that we, uh, that we are God's people and that we should act accordingly. 
So th that that message that we should act accordingly as if as if we know that God is watching and God is is determining events around us that's really the key to what the entire Torah is about. And so we have then in Deuteronomy especially this idea that there is a place that God chooses that the people are supposed to come and gather in uh, and we're supposed to um, we're supposed to be reminded all the time of uh, God's uh, presence in our lives. And the people in the desert had uh, the cloud of God uh, right above their, uh, right above them all the time. They had manna falling every day. They had these constant reminders of the miracle of God. And uh, for us, uh, since the Israelites entered the land of Israel, the manna stopped. The God's presence was not hovering over them anymore, and so life begins. Uh, and how do we how do we try how do we live our lives as we try to bring that presence of God above us? And as as religious people, that is the challenge. The challenge to recognize back on eleven seventy six verse seventeen that God has not forsaken us, and we have not forsaken God. And the idea that to be reminded of the laws of the Torah and the words of the Torah um, all the time. Um, so um, we're, we're also, I just want to read the end of the portion too, just to find out uh, what happens next, next Shabbat. Um, so this coming Shabbat is this, is this double portion. And then the Shabbat, which is the day after Rosh Hashanah, um, we read the poem uh, in the portion Ha'azinu. So that's the bulk of, of Ha'azinu. And then at the end, there's a little bit of narrative in which Moses climbs Mount Nebo. Okay, and then on Simchat Torah, we read the very last uh, chapters of the Torah uh, describing Moses' death and how the people mourn for him. So this is really uh, almost the end of Moses' life, like this is the day before the last day of his life. So, verse 24 and 1178, Vayehi kechalot Moshe et divrei hatarah hazot al sefer ad tumam. When Moses completed writing the words of this Torah on a scroll, well, on a book, but for the Torah, Sefer means scroll, um, uh, until its end. It doesn't even translate the word Sefer in verse 24 in the English. When Moses had put down in writing the words of this teaching to the very end, it doesn't it leaves out the word Sefer there. So when he completed the writing of the, of the words of this Torah on a scroll until in its entirety, ad tumam in its entirety, vayetzav Moshe et haleviim nosei Aaron brit Adonai lemor. He com Moses commanded the Levites who were carrying the Ark of God's Covenant, saying, "So we, we remember back in in Numbers that there are four Levitical families, and one of them was in charge of carrying the Ark." Okay, so that Levitical family he's talking to, la koach et sefer haTorah hazeh take, take this this scroll of the Torah, v'sam tem oto and put it because he's uh, it's the plural because he's talking to all of those Levites of that Levitical family, uh, put it the scroll of the Torah mitzad Aaron brit Adonai Eloheichem v'haya sham becha leed. Put it at the side of the ark of the of God's covenant of your God's, the God of your God's covenant, and it should be there as a w witness, or as testimony. So put it to the side of the ark. Does that mean inside the ark on the side? Does it mean to the side of the ark, like build another shelf to put next to the ark? So uh, place it beside the Ark of the Covenant, your God, and let it remain there as a witness against you. All right, so inside the Ark is the Ten Commandments. 
both the, the, the new full set and the broken original set are in the ark, and now this scroll of the Torah is in the ark, in the ark or alongside the ark too. 27, ki anochi yadati et mer yacha ve'et arpacha hakashe. So because I know your uh, rebelliousness or defiance and your stiff and your stubbornness, your uh, stiff neck, neck, your stiff neckness, so your stubbornness. Hain ba'odeni chai imachem, as I dwell among you, hayom, mamrim he'yitem imadonai va'afki acharei moti, because I know that you'll be, be defiant of me today and even after I die. Moses, this is what Moses is saying to the Levites. Hakilu uh, elai et kol zignei shiftechem v'shotrechem, gathered to me, all the elders of your tribes and your officials, and I'll speak in their ears, these words, and I'll call to testify the heaven and the earth, right? Because that's how uh, the poem begins, 1185, Give ear, O heavens, let me speak, let the earth hear the words I utter. Right, so he's, he's saying he's going to call heaven and earth to testify, to be witness, and he does in the poem. 29, ki adati achare moti, ki hashchet tashchitun, because uh, I know after I die that you will, um, you will run rampant, you'll be destroying things, it says you'll act wickedly. Visartem min haderech, you'll turn from the from the from the from the path you're supposed to follow. Asher tziviti etchem that I've commanded you. Vekarat etchem hara'a, and evil stuff will happen. Ba'acharit hayamim at the end of days. Kita asu et hara et hara beinei Adonai, because you're going to do evil in the eyes of God. Lahach iso b'maaseya dechem to make him angry at the works of your hands, of everything that you do. Right? So let this Torah testify, be in the arks, I know you're going to do bad things. Right? And Moses spoke in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this poem, this song, in its entirety. So it leaves it as a, with a colon here uh, at the end of verse 30, uh, saying that uh, chapter 32 on 1185 is the next thing that's going to, that's, that, that makes the obvious connection, makes it clear by having a colon here that, the, that this poem is, that he's referring to, is the poem of uh, the next portion on 1185. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, a little bit shorter session than usual, but uh, it's just the way it is. It's a shorter portion than usual too. Um, so any uh, questions or comments? All right, so have a good rest of the day, everybody. And uh, next Wednesday, uh, either we'll look at the poem Ha'azinu or we'll look at the Torah readings for, for Rosh Hashanah. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when we, uh, when we start the section next time. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you.